Jonathan Lee Riches investigates. Has Carly Russell opened up the floodgate for younger generations to call and make bogus 911 calls? I asked that because it looks like there might be a Carly Russell copycat. Possibly. There's a case out of the Kansas City, Missouri area. Clay County, Missouri. A 19-year-old called a Ford plant and made a fake, bogus 911 swatting call just a few days after Carly Russell returned home from her hoax incident, right? On the 18th of July, this 19-year-old teenager, Zachary Peterson, allegedly called 911 to report a swatting situation at a Ford plant and 2,200 employees got va evacuated and had to leave. But he did it as a prank. Similar to Carly Russell? I don't know. But are these younger generational people thinking they can get away with calling and making bogus calls out there? Check out this press conference with this guy's case. Regardless if it's related to Carly Russell or not, you got to hear this because this is what some 19 year old just did a few weeks ago, right after Carly Russell returned home. I want to begin by saying that the charge of an offense is not evidence of guilt and that defendants are presumed innocent until found guilty in a court of law. I also want to thank the many law enforcement officers from different agencies that worked to secure the Ford plant, investigate this case, and get us to this point. It is a crime to communicate a false report involving the danger of life for the purpose of causing an evacuation. When someone makes a call like that, they pull law enforcement officers away from their duties, keeping our community safe. Crimes are not being investigated, and calls for service are not being responded to as quickly because police are dealing with that false report. In this case, law enforcement officers entered a building heroically when they thought there was someone inside armed with firearms and explosives. This type of crime also endangers workers who are only trying to do their job and can cause severe emotional tolls on those forced to evacuate. It also has severe financial implications for local businesses. In Clay County, we treat this type of crime with the seriousness it deserves. Today, I received a probable cause statement. And as, after a thorough review of the facts of the case, I charged Zachariah A. Peterson with the D felony of making a terroristic threat. In that, on or about July 18, 2023, in Clay County, Missouri, the defendant knowingly communicated to Ford Motor Company Clay Como plant staff a threat to cause an incident involving a danger to life by telling them a person armed with firearms and explosives was located inside the plant and was going to commit acts of violence for the purpose of causing the evacuation of Ford Motor Company Clay Como plant, a building. That is a D felony with a range of punishment of up to seven years incarceration and a fine of up to $10,000. With that being said, I'd be happy to answer any questions I can concerning the case. Do you know why he did it? The probable cause in state, uh, statement indicates that the defendant made the call for the purpose of causing an evacuation. Was he connected to the plant in any way? He, uh, he made a call uh, to the plant, saying he was armed with a AK-47 and a pound of C4 explosives uh, strapped to his chest. He did that uh, for the purpose of causing evacuation, so a uh, acquaintance of his would not have to go to work. So, uh, where did you guys make the arrest, and did he have any prior interaction with law enforcement before? So, the defendant was developed as a suspect. Uh, he was arrested in the city of Independence. So, he made a call to the plant to evacuate so that his friend didn't have to go to work. That's correct. How old is the suspect? The defendant is 19 years old. 
Does that surprise you? To be honest, no. What is the punishment for something like this? This is a D felony with a range of punishment of up to seven years incarceration in the Missouri Department of Corrections and a fine of up to $10,000. Was the friend that they were trying to get out of work, were they also involved in this in any way? Uh, the probable cause statement does not indicate that. We often cover these stories where threats are called into schools, churches, but it doesn't seem like it results in a suspect being arrested. What's the difference here? I think it says a lot about the work of the Clay County Sheriff's Department and all the different agencies involved in the investigation that they were able to develop a suspect so quickly, uh, affect an arrest, and submit a probable cause statement to our office so that uh, charges could be filed. Is he native of Clay County or? Uh, the probable cause statement indicates that the defendant was arrested at his home, which was in Independence. Did he have any special technology to do this or was he just using something that anyone could do online? Uh, the statement indicates that he used uh, an app on his phone in order to attempt to disguise uh, who he was. As a prosecutor, does it concern you that one individual was able to do this much with just an app on his phone? Well, anytime 2,200 workers have to be evacuated from the Ford plant, production has to stop, uh, it's, it's very serious. So it's unfortunate that one person was able to do so much damage uh, in, in one case. You talked about the impact this has. Uh, just a little more on that. I mean, Officers, law enforcement were away from their uh, cities and towns when things would have been happening to focus on this post, basically. I mean, how impactful is that, that this fake call was made and who knows what would have been happening? Well, it, it's serious, right? Because anytime a law enforcement officer is dealing with that false report, uh, there are legitimate calls for service from our community that are not being responded to as quickly and other crimes that they are investigating have to take a back burner while, while they are dealing with the false report. We know the FBI was involved. Why did this not hit the level of federal charges? I can't speculate as to why that's the case. I can say that the, the, the facts of the case uh, made it appropriate for the, this state, Clay County, to charge the defendant with a D felony. Did the suspect have any past criminal history? Or? I don't have any information uh, like that in the probable cause statement. Did the suspect say anything to investigators? Uh, the probable cause statement indicates that the, after the defendant was arrested and read Miranda rights that he uh, did uh, he didn't admit to making the phone call, uh, stating he was armed with an AK-47, a handgun, and one pound of C4 explosives. This morning, the sheriff talked about the financial toll that this could have. He said they're going to send that information to your office. Do you guys have any of that information yet? I think that information is still being investigated right now. I don't have any concrete numbers for you today. How important is it through charges like this to show people the seriousness of this and the fact that it's not just a prank? Well, this is not a prank, right? Anytime 2,200 workers have to be evacuated, uh, law enforcement officers from a whole series of different agencies have to be taken off their job to deal with this uh, for hours and hours and up to a day. Uh, it's serious, and we treat it seriously in Clay County. What's stopping this from happening again tomorrow? Well, I think the first step is holding folks accountable for their conduct, right? In, in Clay County, when you commit an offense like this, you will be held accountable. So is Zachariah B. Peterson or Zachariah D. Peterson? Zachariah A. Peterson. If there are no more questions, I thank everyone for their time. So yeah, SWAT wanted to get his friend out of work. People think it's funny just to call 911. Carly Russell, now she didn't do a SWAT, but she still called 911 using it as a tool to make a bogus call. A toddler along the street. Now you got this guy doing it. Who's next? He's charged with a felony in Missouri. Carly in Alabama is a misdemeanor. Now, I'm not saying any case is related in any way. I'm just pointing out that younger generation 
seem to think they can call 911 and make hoax calls, swatting calls, fake calls. There got to be consequences to these things. That guy faces up to seven years in prison. Carly faces one year. See the difference? But it's similar because a whole plant got evacuated with this guy, just like all types of authorities were out there wasting their resources looking for Carly. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. We say no to fake 911 calls. We'll talk soon. Stay tuned.